Okay, here goes nothing, folks. Um, step one is to mute my chats, which we're going to do options, chat, and then we go none of these and none of these. Uh, I do want the general chat. The general chat is the white noise. Okay. Uh, I can learn some useful things in white, uh, like what skills my opponent is casting. I'm going to try to run an elixir as Murdon since I rebuilt today. Also, the first time I run an elixir after rebuilding, I make no promises as to how well it will go. First, we're going to get rid of this annoying mob that's attacking me. Uh, actually, I mean, I, I guess I can just start now because I'm going to use a combo. So the big thing is, right, we use a super combo, and that way, um, we have a lot going well for us, theoretically. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have pet food. Darn it. Okay. This is not optimal, but also here's roughly where we are. Uh... XP-wise. Okay. Sorry. This is not off to a good start. For those of you who have seen a lot of my videos, you probably already know I don't get good starts when... Uh... Oh, come on. Be in range. Be in range. Yes. Okay. So what I did there was to throw my AoE while I was next to the chest, which collects for bounties, because uh, I, I will need bounties at that level. If you're leveling on a floor, the uh, bounties on that floor are probably for your level. You'll notice uh, there is a little cloak of fire icon on him. I'm not taking that damage because I'm not auto-attacking him. My spells don't do that, but my, my auto-attacks do, and I need to make sure my Auto attack isn't stickied, but we'll easily find that out if I ever accidentally push it. Uh, and I can work with it either way. So we're going to... And I'm going to just run through the halls here. Ideally, what I would have done, which I did not do, but ideally what I would do uh, for optimal XP is level in a group with... Uh, with other people around my level. This would take care of a lot of my survivability issues. Ah, dang it. Okay, so what happened here is I just assumed that would land, and then it didn't, which was stupid of me, but there you go. Oh, that was actually... Come on, come on, there we go. Okay. Four stars, it's not good. Also, that AoE, those two AoEs together could cause a lot of trouble for me, and they will. Oh, darn. Okay. Yep, I don't think I'm going to get my shield up. Okay, so this is going to be a video of me dying repeatedly if I keep playing like that. That's going to be painful. Okay. Oh, darn. Okay. Res. Now, the problem here as a mage is that my buffs aren't cooled down. Nope, not even that one. All right, so what we're going to do is try and skip this section, go to easier opponents, because that's actually why I'm in this hallway. As a mage, you do a lot better... Um, solo leveling a lot of times by going into hallways where the mobs are a little bit weaker, die more quickly. You get a little bit less XP per kill, but um, you can do faster kills and you spend a lot less of your time dead. You'll notice when my uh, e-shield is not up, I get interrupted a lot. But if I can keep it up for a bit, you'll see I stop getting interrupted. That is because things do not interrupt you while you are under the effect of e-shield. I will run a test because I don't know that that applies to Shield Bash. Shield Bash may still interrupt you anyway. This is a very dangerous thing that's probably going to get me killed, but we're going to we're going to go for it. Okay. Yes, it is. So here we go. So I really probably should have uh well, it, it'll work the way I have it. It'll work. Here we go. With these four stars, you got to be a little early with those uh, restoration potions. Uh, for those of you who have noticed that I have like a lazy eye, that's actually affecting me a good bit when I run elixirs. It's one of the reasons that I hate to uh, to level so much, and that I level in clumps and then not at all for long periods of time. Um, 
it's I see out of one eye at a time. I'll do a video on that. But uh, yes, the the amount of concentration required to run licks effectively means that I can't actually look at what I'm fighting um, for long periods. I have to focus just on my skill bar and hope that there's not something important going on. Oh, that's going to be bad. That's, that's just going to be bad. We're going to run away from this idiot and see if he'll chase us. Because basically, if I throw an AoE right there, I hit too many opponents and I run the risk of basically committing suicide. Okay, so that's what we wanted to happen. Now this guy, now we're just going to go crazy with those AoE attacks because there's nothing for miles. Got to be careful as an Ice Mage because the uh, the radius of your skills is pretty high. Although, honestly, the Phoenix, the Ice Phoenix uh, radius isn't any higher than any of the other Phoenixes. And uh, it's smaller than Ice Blast by a good bit. So, like right now, if I throw Ice Blast, that uh, other enemy should be out of range. But if it gets hit, I'm not going to be surprised. I am going to be a little bummed because it might kill me. Yeah, see, uh, it was out of range. You'll get a feel for what your skills are over time. I also got a feel for the fact I was taking damage. Um, I'm not actually watching my XP bar, my health bar, any of that. And you eventually you just you know develop the sense. Now, if I shoot this guy, I'm going to take a three star and four star at the same time. I don't want to do that, nor can I as far as I know. Ooh, but we, we might have to right here. Okay, well, this is going to stink. Yeah, now we definitely will. Oh, boy. This is going to stink. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. So, anytime you get interrupted as a mage, it means your shield is down, and it's definitely time to go extremely on the offensive or defensive. Take your pick. But you have to, uh, you have to get pretty extreme with your play. All right. So, there we go. So because that's a, that cooldown is a glitch, it can be hard to use at times. Now I am looking at the effects, glancing periodically at the effects on the bar at the bottom because it doesn't move. I can find it visually uh, quite easily. The opponents that are actually moving around on my screen, I have a lot of trouble finding those. Um, or at least, you know, focusing on them. And maybe everyone does. I don't know. But I certainly do. All I'm trying to do is survive long enough for my CDR. Uh, nope. Okay. Now, you don't want to do that because every time that you die, your DPS goes to zero and you run the risk of getting idle locked because you can only, you can immediately resurrect, but then there starts a counter. You can only resurrect once every 20 seconds. And the problem is, uh, or I think it's 20 seconds. I, I haven't tested it in a while. And that was actually very foolish. I, I threw a far too weak of a ice shards, missed 12 points and my CDR. So we're going to throw that in. You'll notice my ice shards immediately becomes available. Whoa. But I get interrupted. And I get interrupted under uh E shield, which means either a glitch or he threw a skill that can get through my E shield, which I wasn't sure if there are such skills, but I would assume there are. I believe bash style skills do get through the shield, although, you know, could be wrong. And for those of you who have been yelling at me that I'm wrong the whole time, feel free to post that down in the comments. Okay, I can take both these people at once, but I don't think they're close enough. I was kind of hoping I would draw them both in. Uh, also, normally I should be doing it in this order. I should be leading with Firebolt, then I should be throwing ah, Ice Shards, but my opponent died. So here I want to lead with Firebolt again, then I want to throw Ice Shards, and hopefully by then Blast will have cooled down. Now, when I throw Blast, oh, see how um, Bolt went ahead and cooled down while I was talking and misclicked? When that happens, I want to go ahead and throw Bolt, because it's not going to delay Blast by any more than the time it takes me to do the hot swap, whereas if I throw Blast first, Bolt will be delayed by the three-second cast time of Blast, which is a lot. That's like half the cooldown of Bolt, so you, so you miss 50% of your Bolt DPS. <laughs> CDR items are kind of overpowered, kind of, uh, in that 
you know, they, they do increase the DPS of skills by a lot, up to 40% uh, currently at the beginning of 2019 with godly Bloodthorn rings. Uh, that being said, if we were to have 40% uh, CDR, but you don't cast your skill 40% more often, it doesn't matter. Your, your CDR item is literally completely wasted. Now, you'll notice that my E-Shield is off and that I haven't refreshed it. That's because I'm winning these fights relatively easily without refreshing it, and I have a lot of sigils, so I'm not that worried about my total health going down. Uh, now, honestly, I don't have a lot of health sigils. I have almost a thousand, but compared to my 4,300 energy sigils, it's just not very much. Honestly, I'd like to get to about 10.5 um, energy sigils, and really, I think my health sigils would be okay. Um, a little uh, significantly lower than that, so this is. Dragon's probably going to come after me. Uh, yes, but uh, my main hope is to get it away from that doorway. So what's going on here, theoretically, is I should be using um, my Ice Lure. And because I'm out of practice with my rotation, I'm taking far too long to kill this just based on... Okay, so I lost that. I'm going to go ahead and throw my potion early. I look at this and see that I can... <laughs> we go. Okay. Here we go. Let's fight this thing correctly. And I'm going to throw Frostbite on it, because why not? I'm not actually even sure that that's a DPS increase, but I, I think there's enough wiggle room in my superiority over this worm that I'll be able to do it now. My bolt hot swap is laggy right now. It means my internet is poor. Hopefully this will stay on for the duration of the video. I did clear out most of my older videos from my phone to make sure I had room earlier today. I have some clips because I'm working on a guide to the defector bosses, but other than that, uh, we should be good. <laughs> oh, nice. So that was almost a perfect hot swap, I think. For those of you who can actually do perfect hot swaps, feel free to correct me in the comments. Uh, there are people who do fantastic CDR hot swaps, but as a general rule, if your plan is CDR hot swapping, you're wrong and you're going to lose DPS. Um, and the reason is just that there are too many potential issues with it. Um, there is some server side lag that is a that is an issue, uh, just due to the fact that you're taking advantage of a glitch. And then also. Um, there's some some manual issues. If you mess up the timing, then you definitely get a DPS decrease. Um, and well, you've probably seen it a couple times where my uh, e shield will not properly change when I swap the skull. And yeah, it's just because it they're not going to fix that, as far as I know. Uh, VR and OTM actually, too, when they were in charge, uh, refused to answer that. Now, they don't say they refuse. They just do not comment on anything to do with uh, whether we're allowed to use CDR hot swapping or not. And the reason for that probably is they, they would like to keep control over that. They don't want to be quoted as having said one thing or another. Um, I know their exception for clan banks has come back to bite them. They Because they don't have a real clan banking system yet, they have made an exception, making it acceptable for players to share clan bank accounts. I will uh, explain the way that works uh, to anyone who's new. Please don't go share your account. That's not at all what that means. Um, but anyway, yeah... Uh, there have been players who have basically taken back accounts from clans uh, that they left. So they, they'll take an entire clan bank with them. And eventually VR makes it right. But there is there is a period of confusion. Uh, ooh, ooh, that did not go as planned. I was really hoping that thing would be dead. I keep misjudging the final amount of HP on those because they're just so much stronger than I expected. We're going to go ahead and use a Resto, even though it's possible that it's unnecessary 
All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to lead out with Bolt, switch pages, and we're going to try to use Lure during the time uh, when Bolt would normal. Oh, okay, so that was that was poorly done right there. Now, my this should kill uh, the journeyman and at the same time do a decent attack to um, this hexworm. So the hexworm has broken through my E shield. I need to go ahead and resto just to be safe. We're going to throw that so we're not losing too much DPS. There's the hot swap. Double check while I'm on that page that the lure is still up. The Phoenix skill does appear to be instacast, uh, so I do try and cast it whenever I can. It does not overlap itself. Um, you, you know, it only lasts for about half the time of the cooldown. Okay, so that was cool. However, with the fact that I'm way up here, we're going to go ahead and go all the way back. All right, now. Oh. Okay. Well, we're actually done with that... Uh, Elixir, for those of you that saw that, there you go, and let's see how that worked. Okay, overall I'm happy with that. Yeah. So anyway, there's some leveling on a 205 mage down the hallway. A couple of deaths, but, you know, it's all good. So, uh... Okay. See you in the next video, folks. Good night.